podcast not everyone's cup of tea to consume an entire podcast that's why welcome to the ranvi shows highlights channel drs clips subscribe and hit that bell icon so when i was telling you about us meeting on twitter for mm. the first time i remember my question to you mm. it was because i was a very different person at that point mm. uh i felt like i was a very intense lover we had a uh, Bun, we've had a bunch of really motivated guys on the show, and I've asked them the same question. They've also said that they're very intense lovers. Uh huh. Like they're very intense, as in not possessive. Sure. Just like listen, if I'm with you, I am five thousand percent with you. You are right. the center of my world. Sure. Okay. I don't know whether. So when you say you're an intense lover, you mean during sex or just overall in a no, relationship? O- overall in a relationship. Okay. Um, I mean in the sex, you're obviously hundred percent there, but correct. You're kind of treating that person. as a very big priority in mm. your mind mm. you know the person will any anyway, intense deeply romantic love when people say oh, sure. hopeless romantic it's the same logic as saying Correct. intense love okay okay um i asked you that what is the hormonal reason behind that and i think you said something along the lines of an addictive personality angle that if you're also mm. addicted to general things which again i've been diagnosed with that as well addictive personality disorder it's called something else now right Uh, I think no, they don't call it a disorder; they call it addictive personality something. But huh. okay, first maybe let's explain that what it is, and then how does it translate into your love life? Yeah, I think I I remember what I said. Um, I said that initially there is a lot of similarity between love and addiction. Mm. So when you are addicted to something, your brain is always looking for it because it's like your life is missing that thing, and you're always looking to see how you can find it to fit it in, and when you don't find it. that sense of missing is very very prominent it's like uh, a threat again you are feeling it physically that ye nahi ho raha hai ye nahi hai so initially love can be like that and as soon as you get it the kind of pleasure that you find it's like a rush of dopamine uh, if an alcoholic doesn't get alcohol for one month and then he suddenly takes a sip he will find he or she will find so much pleasure it's like a reminder of why you were addicted in the first place Uh, I always remember the scene from Friends when Chandler would take a drag of a cigarette after many many years of you know quitting, and that look of expression on his face, right? Uh, that that look of pleasure on his face. That is what early love is, where your partner becomes a drug. You are always looking for him or her, and when he he or she is in your fam in your vicinity is with you, you feel like life is complete. Mm. So it's an addiction. It's a drug. Mm. Eventually, what happens is we become more comfortable with that person. Our equation changes. Love evolves. Love changes. And while some remnant of that always remains, I truly believe that it's not in that same intensity. Because now we are more comfortable in spending time on our own. We are most comfortable experimenting things on our own, traveling alone, which. in that early phase of the relationship would seem unthinkable mm. like why would i go anywhere alone but as you evolve you do start uh, being more comfortable doing these other things so early on yes it is an addiction uh, you want that person with you all the time mm. what about people who say they hopeless romantics you know people who see the movie up mm. pixar's up and say i want that yeah uh Is there some sort of again? Is, has the prefrontal cortex made a false story that you are the Buddha Buddhi from up? <laughs> oh wow! I don't think it's a false story, uh, and it is actually a story. Your identity then becomes the two of you, and that's a beautiful thing. Like nothing against it. I think it's a beautiful thing if your identity is that you are somebody in love with this person. What a beautiful thing! And love can do that. Love can make. another person part of you now and that is also why breakups can sometimes really hurt because once your brain has done that right once your brain has convinced itself that this person is a part of you it's like your arm and when you break off your arm it's going to hurt mm. so breakups hurt that much it can physically feel as if a part of you is being taken away mm. because love can do that it can like i give you the example of roger federer with the racket and while roger is holding the racket the racket feels like part of his arm similarly love can make you feel that this whole other person is now attached to you mm. which is also why you feel possessive mm. if somebody else is flirting with her asking her out what the hell it, it's not that she is mine you know we sometimes confuse that so 
love can sometimes take on that toxic look because it's not about possessiveness it's me and that is a strange uh, you know line to draw because where does it end love is great but what if love can make you act in a violent way because hey you're not trying to possess them is just you're saying that hey you are part of me again from the scientific aspect of this what i'm understanding is up to a certain level love or relationships or sex or romance is similar for all human beings mm -hmm. and then the prefrontal cortex comes in and shit up <laughs> like and then it becomes like subjective absolutely then your childhood comes and your daddy issues your mommy issues your exams your position in life your career money fame <laughs> everything so your prefrontal cortex is the badwayo <laughs> <laughs> no also the savior <laughs> The savior, or, also or the yeah, savior, the or the Superman. Yeah, one of the two. Okay, Lex Luthor or Superman. Let's call gotcha. that. Yeah, the villain or the hero. Yeah, he, your prefrontal cortex can completely change your relationship because everything that happens below that is the same. Doctor Sid Warrior. While I can continue talking to you about sex and love and everything in between, <laughs> gotta call this episode uh, to a close. Any Brilliant. parting notes, Doctor Sid Warrior? Um, I think it's. enjoy being single mm i really believe this uh, you got to enjoy being single to enjoy being in a relationship mm. like you've got to enjoy being who you are just who you are because i don't think anyone owes anyone anything you yeah. know just because you're in a relationship nobody owes you anything you don't owe anyone anything you are in it to grow and very very often you find that helping somebody or being in a relationship makes you such a better person right so i've often thought of this empathy actually comes out of selfishness it's selfish to help people it's selfish to love people it's selfish to grow with people i think every ceo every leader finds out that you know the more your people grow the more you grow So the more your partner grows, actually, the more you grow. So selfishness is not a bad thing. The better you are as a person, the better you will be in a relationship. Mm. So yeah, that's yeah. just my takeaway. No, one hundred percent, man. And you know what I love about even these uh, love and relationship conversations with you is that there's always a background of scientific understanding. Yeah. So I know that that's the source material for your thoughts, which is yeah. what I find fascinating about having conversations. about anything it could be spiritualism yeah. ghosts love whatever with you also this um being in a 17 18 year old relationship has added um insights that i would have never had otherwise mm. you know i could read all the neuroscience i want but uh, the conversations that i've had with smriti over the last 18 years has added insights that i don't think i could have had otherwise so definitely that yeah. has helped 